Sis and Poogie looked at each other in amazement, and then back at their uncle. But Midge is part of the holiday magic here, and... Sis finally found her voice. Magic, she gasped. Uncle Buck nodded his head. Magic, he said, the kind that Santa Claus uses and needed one night like tonight. The man tugged on Midge's reins to start turning the big sled around. The snow swirled hard. But my story is getting ahead of itself, he said. Let's head back to the house and I can tell you the whole tale over cups of hot cocoa. Poogie and Sis started to protest that they wanted the whole story right then. They had barely said three words when they let out a shout. From behind a tree, one of those little snowmen appeared, running toward their sleigh. Uncle Buck pulled the reins on Midge, but he didn't need to. The horse had already stopped in his tracks. The kids could only stare at the th as the thing reached them and tugged at Uncle Buck's sleeve. What is it, Nod? Their uncle calmly said to the white creature. He leaned down to hear the snowman's whispers before it turned around and ran back from where it came. Uncle Buck, they cried in unison. What was that? That was Nod with an urgent message. Uncle Buck said, he's one of the bander shoots that help with the holiday magic. The kids began peppering the man with questions. Smiling, he raised his hands to hush them. I'll tell you everything when we get back to the house. The trip back to the old farmhouse seemed to take much longer than the original ride into the woods. Poogie and Sis were so excited they forgot all about being cold. The idea of having a cup of hot chocolate sounded good, but that wasn't what they was making them so na antsy. Poogie and Sis had questions, lots of questions, and they couldn't wait for the answers. Although the darkness had settled in, Midge had no trouble finding the way back to the barn. Uncle Buck unhitched the old horse from the sleigh and got him settled into the stall. Immediately, Poogie and Sis each grabbed Uncle Buck by a hand, nearly dragging him into the house. Why does it take him so long to make a cup of hot chocolate, Sis asked her brother, as she watched Uncle Buck pour the hot milk into the cup. Finally, the three of them were sitting around the fireplace. Uncle Buck in the big wing-back chair and Poogie and Sis on the floor next to his feet. So what's the story? asked Poogie. And what were those little white things we saw while we were sledding? Yes, and what did you mean about Midge being magical? Sis asked in a high-pitched voice that demonstrated her excitement. Uncle Buck took a sip of hot chocolate and set the cup on the end stand next to the chair. He cleared his throat scooted up to the edge of his seat and turned his head toward the big window. Things around this farm have been magical for a long time, said Uncle Buck. It all started one night when I was just a little boy. Their eyes were bright as they listened intently to Uncle Buck talk about the night he had gone into the woods to cut a Christmas tree. I had given myself plenty of time to be back before dark. But I didn't count on the storm coming up so quickly, he said. Before long, the snow had become so blinding and the trees so snow-covered that they all looked the same, Uncle Buck continued. The snow came down so hard that it covered my tracks as fast as I could make them. Unable any longer to see the lights of the old farmhouse and not knowing which way to turn, Uncle Buck told the children how he found a tree and sat down under its low, thick branches for protection from the storm and the cold. I kept wanting to fall asleep because I was so cold, he said. But every time I'd shut my eyes, I'd hear little noises, like little magical poofs. Sis grabbed Poogie by the hand and scooted close to him. Uncle Buck told the children that it sounded as if something or someone was dancing lightly on top of the light, fluffy snow. Suddenly, I opened my eyes and there they were, four of the cutest little snow creatures I had ever seen, Uncle Buck said. Bandershoots, they're called. They were short and big around the middle. Their eyes were as dark as coal. Sis was about to burst inside, anxiously wanting her uncle to speed up the story so she could hear the ending. 
Oh, Uncle Buck, sis said, her voice nearly cracking from excitement. You really saw them? What did they do? What did they say? Uncle Buck chuckled at her enthusiasm and curiosity. Well, one of the little banner shoots took off a heavy winter blanket that had been draped around its neck and wrapped it around me to keep me warm, he said. Two of them brushed the snow off of my wet clothing and helped me to my feet. It was then that Uncle Buck said he could see the fourth one standing near a tree in the distance. He was holding something in his hand, Uncle Buck said. At first, it looked like a piece of heavy string. Suddenly, from behind the big pine tree, stepped Midge. It wasn't string at all, said Uncle Buck, with a smile on his face, so big that he looked almost silly. The fourth one was leading Midge by the reins. Uncle Buck demonstrated how he squinted his eyes to see clearly through the blinding snow. How could it be? Uncle Buck wondered. Midge was locked in the barn when he left the house, and he knew for sure that the old barn door was locked because he had locked it himself. Almost in unison, the four snow creatures smiled at one another as if they each knew exactly what he was thinking. He could have sworn that he even noticed Midge wink and offer a slight smile. With a magical boost, the bander shoots hoisted Uncle Buck high up onto Midge's back, gave the reins a slight jerk, and off the old horse trotted through the snow and into the night, knowing exactly which direction to head in. Before long, the lights of the farmhouse began getting larger and larger as Midge got closer and closer. The four little bander shoots had somehow managed to keep right in time with Midge's trot, and everywhere they seemed to touch down, there was a little poof place left in the new fallen snow. That's all I can remember about that night, Uncle Buck said, except that I woke up in my own bed the next morning with a fresh cut Christmas tree propped up against the dresser. Poogie and Sis sat mesmerized by Uncle Buck's story, wondering if the bandershoots could really be the same things they saw out near the barn earlier in the evening. The siblings looked at each other and simultaneously jumped up, grabbing their coats and headed out the door to the barn. Just as they reached the old barn door, Mom and Dad's car pulled slowly into the slippery driveway. They exited the car and stepped into the barn where the children were standing, staring up at Midge. Mom, Dad, what's wrong, said Boogie. You both look like you've seen a ghost. Dad shook himself, gained his composure, and asked, How long has Midge been here in the barn, kids? They assured him that the horse had been in the barn ever since they had returned from their ride into the forest with Uncle Buck. Mom and Dad stood motionless, staring at each other in disbelief. But son, that can't be, said Dad. The snow got so bad that our car wouldn't go. We slid into a snow bank and couldn't get the car out. But then Uncle Buck came along, and he and Midge helped pull us out, so we could get home safely, Dad said. Mom looked at Dad and said, go ahead, tell him the rest. Dad's face drained as he gulped, almost swallowing his words. You won't believe it, but it was like there were four little snow creatures, one on each corner of the car, lifting it out of the ditch, Dad said. Poogie and Sis looked at each other, somewhat confused. But how could that be, Sis whispered to Poogie. Uncle Buck was in the house with us all the time. And Midge, he was here, tied up in the barn. They both turned and looked at Midge, just in time to see the old horse give a wink and a nod. Speaking of nod, said Poogie. Without hesitation, they ran over, threw open the barn door, just in time to hear giggles in the distance and little poof sounds skipping off into the snow-covered woods. Boogie turned and glanced at Midge, then looked at the old biplane. Apparently, the old farm really was full of the magic of Christmas. Now, if they could only figure out what those big round hoops on the wall were for. <laughs>